had this conversation a couple days ago with Travis Andrews, a fellow community garden organizer here in Oklahoma City. Uh, he has an organization called Native Farming Solutions, and he teaches people traditional farming practices, including Native American techniques and Korean natural farming. And we work together a bit. I've been to his garden at the Skyline Urban Ministries Food Pantry in South Central Oklahoma City. Um, and he's been to the garden that I was taking care of up until recently at LoveWorks Leader. Leadership, and he uh, was a guest speaker at my deep mulch workshop where we used uh, some of his Korean natural farming inputs to soak into our deep mulch beds to break down the manure and wood chips. Uh, and I also went to an event that he organized with some middle schoolers at the um, Native American Museum in Oklahoma City. And I uh, took the kids through a business planning process for a farm business. Uh, so we've had a little bit of collaboration. And I was hoping that we could discuss further, you know, how we can work together to get more people involved in regenerative agriculture. And we're definitely coming from the perspective of community garden organizers and how do we get more volunteers out. But I have some ideas about then transitioning those volunteers into growing more food for themselves and turning it into a business. So I wanted to uh, throw those uh, ideas past him and see what he thought. So this is that conversation. Um, I'd really like to hear your input on this topic. So please uh, give us some comments down below. And um, also you can get on my Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash regenerative revolution. Uh, if you're just listening to this on Spotify or something, uh, please jump into my Patreon. Uh, you can support my work for just $3 a month and be involved in this background conversation about how do we get more people involved in the regenerative economy, agriculture, cooperative business, all of that sort of thing. Thing. Um, I'm really trying to focus all of my effort onto creating organizations and bringing people together to do this work. And I really need your support because I just recently lost my uh, financial support for the community gardens. So uh, please check that out. And also you can follow Travis at uh, Native Farming Solutions on Instagram and Facebook. And you can find my community gardening work at regenerate-the-earth.com. Tons of links down below uh, or in the description wherever you're listening to this. So uh, I hope you can enjoy this conversation and I look forward to hearing from you. Travis, how do we get more people doing regenerative agriculture? Um, and, man, it's all about attracting volunteers. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so far working at, you know, I, I work at Skyline, um, we've been able to get a lot of volunteers uh, through the church network. That, that's kind of been like the biggest one. So, you know, the, uh, it seems like there's, um, you know, some uh, these churches have a partnership where they uh, they come together from different parts of, of the city um, and they, they tour um, like food banks. Um, so, you know, Skyline's fortunate because we have a, a garden there. Um, and so we're, we're able to get, you know, quite a bit of volunteers through the garden, um, through the churches. We're going around doing um, good things for the community. Um, uh, outside of that, it, it, it's kind of tough to, um, it seems like it's kind of tough to build that, uh, that camaraderie, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I was just thinking about this question earlier like how do we take what those churches are doing and, and help ourselves like that and uh for the most part like you and i um uh like me i'm just mostly into gardening so that that other aspect is is, is new to me um the the, the um community um planning community um, organizing yeah community organizing um <clears throat> and so um yeah, like we had a group come through Skyline today, and it was pretty awesome. They brought 20 volunteers, um, and it was a Latino a summer youth program, um, mm -hmm. summer youth program. Um, and I was thinking it would be really cool to get a, a summer youth program for gardening. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm not sure if they're... Uh, if people specifically want to do gardening or if they just want to do summer, you know, youth activities, things mm -hmm. to keep them out of trouble, keep them safe. Um, and then um, sure enough, we could just, you know, get them around to the different gardens um, that, that you and I um, um, work at, work with. Um, to me, that that's one idea. Um, mm -hmm. 
you know, aside from that, you know, you and I do a lot to uh, advertise and promote our own work and other people's work and try to push collaborations. Um, but it, it's, it, it's, it's hard to get a lot. It's hard to get anything done um, as individuals. It, it takes collaboration. Um, so, man, how do we get more people out there? Jeez. Uh, that's a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also consistently, I mean, I did have a summer program for middle schoolers up until a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I got my rug pulled right out from under me. Um, but you know, I only had, I had in the spring semester, I had about 20 kids enrolled in it. Usually about like 15 to 18 would show up each week. Um, but you know, over the summer it dwindled down to like four or five showing up each week. Um, and it was, it was a lot of different kids. Like there were maybe three kids that would show up pretty consistently. And then we'd have like a couple of drop-ins, um, from the rest of the group. Uh, but you know, it was, it was hard to get them to even show up consistently over the summer. And I think the thing that really drew them in, in the spring semester was that we also had a culinary program. So they were taking some of the produce and they were cooking it and making meals, um, cause it was an after school program. And so that brought in a lot of kids cause kids really love to cook. Uh, and, but it seemed like I could only get them to garden if they got to cook it. Hmm. Um, um, I, I'm into that. Um, uh, so I try and do like surveys through um, social media. And uh, one of the most popular subjects we have is um, food as medicine. Um, you know, I, I like doing demographic studies. Um, and I always like kind of pointing out that Generation X, oddly enough, doesn't have anything to do with gardening or food and health and wellness. They're strictly driven for like pro production and productivity. Um and so I'm always trying to promote, um, you know, Generation A. You know, I'm, I'm Generation Y. Um, Generation Z was like the youth group that I had at, at the garden today. And Generation A isn't here yet. Um, but I always like to promote that Generation A could be the first group that thinks it's normal to grow food again. Like, yeah, but how are we going to make that happen when we can't get them to, you know, anybody to show up now? Um, do we uh, in, uh, introduce them to food as medicine? To me, that's like one of the biggest things. Um, reconnecting people with food, food as medicine, so that they can have a relationship and understand, you know, uh, their relationship with food from seed to table. Because mm -hmm. uh, everybody thinks it just comes from can to table, you know, or, yeah. or a plastic bag. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. and I like highlighting like just how much better it is to prepare your own food from scratch. Um, and how beneficial it is to not just give in to convenience all the time. So to me, it seems like um, it would it could do us a lot of good to kind of like uh, uh, lure them in with tasty treats. Um, <laughs> and they'd be like, okay, out in that garden, I know it's 100 degrees, but out there is where this stuff comes from. Um, um, you know, today we, we had, had a, a good amount of success. We had um, uh, the majority of my talk was food is medicine. Um, and these were people who never really gardened and didn't really have any plans to. But I feel like we got through to them. We also served Indian tacos. Um, some of the stuff came from the garden. Um, it, was, it, was, it was awesome. And they you know, said they wanted to come back. They were looking, where do we sign up? Where do we volunteer? You know, We'd like to yeah. get more involved. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like, uh, yeah, like, like going directly for uh, garden volunteers, is trick is a little difficult but um like like you said talking about food and how to prepare with um raw ingredients local plants native herbs and so forth um i think that would be a, a good option yeah yeah i think luring people in with food um serving food uh even just like roasting marshmallows or something, you know, I've got a fire pit out at Santa Fe South, Santa Fe South garden and, um, you know, plenty of wood. And so I've been wanting to just build fires, bank biochar and, and roast marshmallows, uh, or hot dogs over the fire, you know, and just having that as an activity, as part of an event, um, or we had one a couple of weeks ago, we called sun tea Saturday and we made some sun tea, 
Um, but, you know, just getting people out there, I think, I think you're right with the church groups, you know, whenever we've tried to just advertise to the public, no one shows up. Um, so you have to target a group specifically like a church group or girl scouts, boy scouts, 4-H, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, what, what we're talking about right now is getting people involved in the community gardens. Cause you and I both organize community gardens, but, you know, do you think community gardens are the best way to get people involved in regenerative agriculture? I mean, that's kind of an assumption that I've been running on for a bit, just to like get people out there, get their hands dirty, give them an introduction to it. And that that would hopefully get them to want to do more. Um, but I'm not sure if that's really the best approach. What do you think? Um, no, I, I kind of agree with you. Um, some of the survey questions that I have um, the feedback that I've gotten is that the majority of the people who pay attention to my groups do not have um, space to garden. They don't have very large spaces to garden. Um, and so we're always trying to promote like small scale gardening and composting. Um, you know, uh, uh, regenerative ag in buckets is kind of like my, my system. Um, um, <clears throat> um, so yeah, to, to like promote gardens and stuff, um, it's good, but not everybody's going to be able to go back home to a, a, you know, a 10 by 10 plot or anything like that. Some of them just have like sure. patio gardens and, and so forth. Yeah. And uh, I've heard this from many people. They think container gardening is a really good place to get people started. Um, maybe, maybe container mushrooms too, because I've got a mushroom farm. I'm trying to get up and running again, and I've been trying to figure out what to do. I, I mean, one idea, I've got three and a half gallon buckets. Why don't I just fill it up with, with inoculated substrate and put a little piece of plastic up, a little plastic tent over the top with some holes poked in it, and they can just grow their own mushrooms and then get the bucket back to me afterwards. <laughs> but people like yeah. stuff like that. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, no. Um, uh, that sounds like a lot of work. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, like a lot of people, they just kind of want you to do everything for them, right? And, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and I, I love bringing volunteers in, but then I, it's kind of annoying when you just like end up doing the work, like trying to show them and teach them, and you end up doing the work like oh, for yeah. them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's what I wish that I could have explained to my funders who recently pulled my funding without having a single conversation with me about it is that um, volunteers don't do work. Volunteers create more work. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. That's very true. Uh, you know, they, they pull weeds, i.e. everything and usually destroy the plants that I have already in the ground. You know, like it's it's not helpful. It's educational. You can either have an educational garden for volunteers or kids or whatever, or you can have an urban farm. You cannot have both in the same space. Yeah, amen. I hear that. Thank you. <laughs> Someone gets it. They're like, where are all the plants? I'm like, well, all the kids and volunteers pulled them out. Yeah. yeah. What, what, you expect me to have plants? <laughs> I have kids running around here. What? <laughs> no, no, that doesn't work. Um, had this conversation a lot uh, this yeah. year but those yeah. new beds that we built the deep mulch beds uh that i've been building um you know that one in the row that we built together that had the um the melons growing out of it is the best thing in the garden right now it's doing amazing of course they kicked me out of the garden but i've been going back by there to check on it um and it's just blowing up the their vines are going all over there's no weeds in there um, and they, and they have barely been watering it. I can tell cause it's pretty dry, but that bed has been doing really well cause I built it correctly. Um, <laughs> it took me several months to get all the materials to build it correctly and to figure out how to do it. But, um, yeah, we, we really, I think hit on something, the beds under the trees at Santa Fe South as well. I've been building raised beds with herbs in them under the fruit trees. Uh, those are doing really well. And that creates a space for all of the dropped fruit to fall on that mulch and get mulched into the soil instead of just, um, you know, getting mowed down, you know, dragged off by the mower or whatever. <laughs> I think they were kind of raking them out. I don't know. I don't even know what happened to the previous year's um, uh, uh, fruit because nobody ate it. It all just fell down and rotted. But um, 
yeah, now, now that's got that deep mulch, that's going to absorb that, uh, that fallen fruit. Uh, and we've got a lot of fruit right now. Um, and, but you know, I mean, I post online all the time, Hey, we've got fruit, we've got pears, we've got apples. They're ready to harvest. Come on out. Nobody comes even getting people to harvest the food. It doesn't happen. I mean, I've got community gardens where there's tons of peppers, tons of okra post on social media. Hey, free peppers, free okra. It rots. It goes bad. So, you know, how do we get people to wake up? How do we get people to see these resources as valuable and utilize them? Yeah. Um, man, how, how long have you been at this? Um, I was, I was organizing multiple community gardens in 2003. Okay, man. But yeah, I, I went back, but I, I stepped back from it for a while because it was pointless. And I still think it's kind of pointless. But I <laughs> I just keep beating my head up against the same wall, thinking that <laughs> somehow there's a way to make it work. Um, yeah. A lot of people think, think there is. Oh, yeah, community gardens. That's awesome. That's great. But, you know, how do you actually make it work? I mean, it, it really, I the only way I've been able to keep my sanity is to really see it as that educational experience and to really push the, you know, the natural farming and the the soil building, composting, um, that aspect of it more than just growing food because people just don't seem that interested in the growing food. But you start talking about composting and soil science. Now people go, huh, really? What? Like there's some curiosity there. Uh, also with the mushrooms. It just, it just perks people's interest a bit more than vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one of the, you know, in regards to like, uh, food as medicine, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I've been trying to show off more things like just making things from scratch, like butter, yogurt, um, um, and things like that. Um, I'm finding that, um, for me, it seems like people are more interested in that. There's there's two types. Uh, when I go to these different crowds, there's people who are into food as medicine, and there are people who are into um, uh, like gardening. But um, well, whenever I go out, I always ask, "Are you into nutrition?" Uh, if I'm if I'm talking about composting, I'm like, "Are you guys into gardening?" nutrition or just waste diversion because mm -hmm. i find that people who are into nutrition aren't into gardening um but they you know they're um they they, they do like composting mm -hmm. um um and so uh, yeah i find that people will compost and, and not be interested in like cooking mm -hmm. um and so anyways the the cookers they're usually the ones who don't know that they can compost the ones mm -hmm. who are into cooking and things like that, just making different foods, they're usually oblivious to like the purpose for eggshells and everything else. <laughs> um, so I like teaching, you know, that regenerative side on, on food waste diversion, um, getting creative with uh, food waste mm -hmm. and specifically trying to target um, the, the demographics say that Generation Z is the is the uh, most concerned with health and wellness. They're all. They're also the um, most mentally stressed demographic. They have the most chronic mental illness, but they're the first who are who prioritize health and wellness. Um, so, but these are also the Zoomers who don't have. They, they most of them live in apartments, live with their parents, or you know, preparing for college. I mean, it's all small scale um, regenerative stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, for, for us, we're, we're definitely trying to zoo, uh, hone in on that because it can be done online and it's a lot less back-breaking back work, um, you know, pounding the ground, pounding the pavement and um, campaigning and, and so forth. Um, so, you know, you've been at it for, for quite a while. What is that, like over 15 years? When you, 20 years. For, 20 um... years. I mean, on and off, I've done other things in the meantime, but, you know, I, I tried it 20 years ago and, you know, I, I had this same vision of having a community gardening network and for part of it to be helping people garden in their, in their own backyards. And do you, have you met, uh, oh, what's her name from Lillian Timber Farms? Um, yes. Uh, I forget her name. Her name also starts with an L, uh, I think, um, yeah, she just put out on her Instagram that they have an initiative to help people garden at their homes. 
-hmm. as well. And I think that's a good direction to go in. I was thinking of doing a community gardening network where, well, and we, we did it back in the early 2000s, where we go to people's houses, like rotate, um, and uh, we'd have a potluck and we work in their garden. Uh, and that, that was pretty fun. That worked pretty well. And, you know, people would show up because if you show up, maybe, maybe we can have a rule. Like if you show up three times, you'll be put on the list to have us come to your house, you know? Um, so to get that help from other people, people would show up. Right. Yeah. Um, um, I was just thinking about while you're talking about, I was just thinking about like mm -hmm. seasonal things. Cause one thing I noticed is that I can only get volunteers uh, in between school, you know, the, the youth groups, mm -hmm. um, uh, school out and school in is when I can um, plan to have like a steady stream of, of vol youth volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, aside from that, we don't really need volunteers through the winter too much. And it mostly comes down to um, <clears throat> like spring and fall right now. Um, spring is kind of like easy volunteering because it's nice and cool. There's not a whole lot of weeds, but this time of year is when it's like, it's real work. Mm -hmm. um, um, so it seems like we need different types of volunteers like seasonally and we can anticipate the youth to be active in the um, fall. I would, I would assume that like older folks might be more active in the springtime, mm. uh, middle age and above mm -hmm. um, when it's not too hot. And then, uh, uh, like adults, people who can handle it would, would, would volunteer this time of the year. So it seems like we might need to like strategically look for those types of groups, like seasonally. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so the summertime, that, that's like youth programs, youth activities, meeting mm -hmm. with, um, networking with uh, community um, organizers. Um, I feel like yeah yeah I mean if, if we could if we could do an actual camp like a, a summer camp maybe maybe get a few of us together and do like a whole week-long thing because that's a lot to plan for but you know that's that's the kind of format that I think um you know parents are looking for so that it's like a whole chunk of time that they can offload their kid and they can schedule for it just within within a certain week or maybe a weekend you know a few days or something like that I mean, you um, did that, that, that thing that I talked at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, the group that we had today, um, they, they travel Mondays and Wednesdays, two days a week for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, I had, I was daydreaming about the same thing, like you were talking about, um, a couple of us getting together and, and uh, being able to uh, take these kids around to different gardens on a schedule. Hey, okay? mm -hmm. uh, cause like the, the group that I just visited with, they've been going steady for nine weeks mm -hmm. um, next week last week so they've been going all summer every week just traveling all over the city to museums libraries um anywhere they could anywhere they could go for educational content yeah um yeah. and that's that seems like what it needs to be a collaborative effort to put together a, a youth gardening program uh, yeah. that seems like a lot of work but <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it is well and, and i mean what you're what, what you're talking about yeah just like capturing um, existing youth groups, existing camps, and just bringing them in for, you know, a day or a couple of hours, yeah, that, that definitely is lower hanging fruit, I would think. Um, but, but yeah, like I, I'm, I really want a way to have consistent help in the gardens. And so, um, you know, I have a, I have three high school interns currently working with me, uh, eight to 10 hours a week. Um, and that's been great because we can just show up and, and do something together as a team. Uh, and I've also had them uh, organizing some workshops. I don't know. They're, they're, they're freshmen. So getting, you know, high school freshmen to organize their own workshop is a little bit like, especially getting them to invite people uh, uh, has been a little tough, but um, you know, I, I like to see them take some leadership and, and once people are there, they're pretty good at, at leading the group. Um, but yeah, like consistent help and, and not just help, but helping them help themselves. I mean, I, I want to be able to like dole out sections of the garden, say, Hey, you want to have chickens? Okay, here, take, take the, 
chicken or take the poultry run. We're putting together a poultry run right now, old greenhouse that we're wrapping and fencing. And so, you know, I want to find somebody who lives nearby to just take that over and put their animals in it. Um, I don't want to do it. I want them to do it, you know, or like, hey, you can take this corner of the garden over here. Um, so, you know, how do we get people involved in that in that sort of a way? Um, um, I was just thinking about like something that I'm going through uh, at my work, which was um, I just kind of was through just jumped into the garden with both feet and just hit the ground running. Um, and uh, I didn't have a whole lot of strategy. I just kind of figured I'd, you know, make it work as I go. I figured I was talented enough, had enough skill and know-how. But um, the month of May, like, uh, things snuck up on me. Things things changed and mm -hmm. it, it became too much. Um, um, and so, you know, what it came down to is my boss was like, well, you need more of a, a system, you know, a plan. We need to know what's going to be happening, you know, at these eight points throughout the calendar. Um, solstices, equinoxes, and cross quarters. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, and so she was saying, like, you know, my boss was saying, you know, they never, nobody ever wrote the program for this garden, so I have to write it. Yeah. So I have mm -hmm. to write the spring, the, the summer, and yeah. the fall, the, the major the major things. Um, and so essentially I'm going to be writing the template for the garden, you know, the, the, um, the, the you know, in a quadrant and, you know, I'm going to need seed sprouting on this day. I'm going to, you know, but aside from the major things, which is mostly just seed sprouting, um, you know, my daily chores are three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, which is, you know, I would say mowing is for Monday, watering for Wednesday and feeding for Friday. So to me, that would be like the, um, the routine that the camp would need or the kids and they would know that okay we're going to hit these you know three gardens this week and each one you know we have to mow weed and seed mow weed seed and feed um and if they have a, a template for the year you know um they'll, they'll know okay well it's it's uh, may we're going to be hitting this garden doing all these things um um and and that's mostly what I need. Like I I feel like at my garden I can handle the the daily tasks, the Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But it's when I have a huge, you know, at least like I would say at least like once a week I need a crew to come through and help me with um, seeding, weeding, and and stuff like that. Um, so if we had a crew that just like toured the gardens, you know, made the garden circuit all summer long, um, this was their job, you know, run around and seed and seed and weed and feed. Um, and then at each garden, we just have to establish, you know, proper, um, like composting and worm bins and biochar and, you know, all the resources needed for the, for the garden is there. Um, and then, you know, I have to go and put signs and labels on everything, um, so that, you know, the volunteers can show up and have a good experience, mm -hmm. um, so that they can just show up and feel comfortable to, you know, they know where the tools are, they know where it goes and, um, that's something that I'm dreading to do, but I need to make it that, that way for the volunteers so that they're not showing up like with questions or lost or, you know, uh, just unsure to ask, you know. Um, so it's kind of like make it like 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 demi proof in a way. Um, um, but anyways, those, those are some of the thoughts I have. How does how's that sound? Yeah. Um... Yeah, you know, when and then when there's funding to pay someone like you to do all of that work, that's great. I just lost my funding, so I'm trying to figure out how to crowdfund funding. So I've, you know, just set up my Patreon today for this channel, but um, yeah, I'm trying to build a site um, called Crop Share Co-op. So it's a it's built on a on a fundraising platform uh, that's just a, a WordPress plugin. But what it is, is a CSA platform. So if you don't know, CSA means Community Supported Agriculture, and it's where um, people purchase shares of crops before they're grown. So typically that would mean you like purchase an entire seasons of vegetables, and then you would get a box of vegetables every week, whether you'd have to go pick them up from the farmer or have it delivered. Um, but like a box of produce every week. Um, and you know, that works for some people and some farms, but you know, that's a very specific situation where the farmer has enough of enough things to fulfill that. That kind of an order and where the customer wants a box of random produce every week um, that they, you know, 
are going to be able to cook. Uh, so I'm creating this platform to be a little bit more flexible that farmers could sell shares of just one thing. So you could sell a share of just garlic or just apples and people would pay in advance. And then however much is harvested would get split between that many people. Um, so, you know, you'd have predetermined, I'm going to sell 10 shares of garlic and I'm going to plant, you know, this much area. Um, so, uh, that can be used to help new farmers get started. Um, it can be used to help, you know, existing farmers know how much to grow and not have waste and, and have a market. Um, but it could also be used for the community gardens. So somebody could get on there and list their community garden as something that you can purchase shares in. And so people could own, you know, or buy, you know, $5 a month, or $10 a month uh, share and just be contributing towards that community garden being taken care of. And it would just be like a first come first serve instead of getting this much, you know, you would just be able to go pick whatever's available. You just be supporting that local community garden. Um, so that that's the project that I'm working on currently. Um, does that sound like something that would work to you? Um somewhat i've i've always i've heard the like csa things i've never really gotten involved in it i've i've heard it you know the lingo and um I, I haven't gotten too much involved into it myself just personally it just seems like work um i don't like filling out paperwork um and mm -hmm. it seems like those groups usually require that um um no it, it seems pretty uh interesting um I was just I was just trying to come to mind like uh, the place where that might work is is like Edmond or Guthrie because I had heard somebody uh, have this conversation with me about community gardens and they were saying like yeah you're gonna have a tough time making that work on the south side and in the metro and everywhere else but if you come to these gated communities in Edmond they will do it they will pay to put up a greenhouse in their gated community and they will buy um, food for their neighborhood. Mm. Uh, uh, and yeah somebody had pitched that idea to me they were saying you need this will work in the gated communities but not on the south side not, not below the metro interesting uh, interesting um yeah i mean i mean buying a share the typical kind of share in a csa because normally that would cost like a thousand dollars for a season you know it's it's not a cheap thing um it would be something that that um you know, more of an upper class, uh, customer base would be wanting to get interested in. Um, so I can see where they're coming from with that. I know, uh, Commonwealth urban farms, I think they have a CSA or at least they did when I was living there. Um, isn't that how they sell some of their produce? Um, no, no. Now they have it set up for the, uh, uh urban farmers program where folks can come in and grow and try to sell to market. Oh, okay. So they're letting other people come in. Oh, yeah. That's, that's good too. And I mean, with the Santa Fe South garden, they, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm wanting to do is help people get set up there to grow food, to sell themselves. Um, but yeah, crowdfunding is kind of the, the angle that I'm trying to go right now, as far as getting support for community gardens, um, and, and startups. And I, I mean, I'm hoping that some of the people I could get interested in on the South side are people who would want to make money farming. And if they can, you know, earn that money up front, then they can use that to purchase, you know, chickens or feed or, um, you know, mulch and compost, whatever they need for, for their gardens to get going. Cause yeah, startup costs are just an issue. And, I don't know. It seems like currently people, you know, my age and younger are wanting to be more, um, more self-employed. They're wanting flexibility in their schedule. They're wanting, you know, to be a part of the gig economy, do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I definitely think that being able to garden part-time would probably be a lot more, um, attractive than the idea of, you know, having to purchase a large piece of land and move out in the country and do it full time uh, to a lot of people who might be interested. They just want to try it out first, small scale. Um, 
but I don't know. I mean, where we're going from the angle of like community gardens being like an entry point to people just getting their hands dirty and having this educational experiments. What is the intermediate fit stage between that and becoming like a full-time regenerative farmer? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not too sure. Um, you know, cause, cause regenerative farming for me, um, as a result of like how you eat food, uh, uh, how you recognize food as medicine and, and, and just not being wasteful. Um, you know, so to me, like regenerative farming can start at, in, at home in a, in a small kitchen. Mm -hmm. But just the concept of not being so dang wasteful and being resourceful. That's, to me, that's all regenerative farming is, yeah. just knowing how to be resourceful. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, that, that's definitely an angle, too. And I think, you know, we're here in Oklahoma. I think there is a do-it-yourself kind of attitude that's pretty prevalent here. Uh, survivalist kind of attitude a little bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. for, yeah, we yeah. have power outages and all that fun stuff. Um, um, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, no, um, I mean how how do we make it more attractive we have gardens there's gardens it's just like advertisement and talking about like funding um you know a production garden versus an education garden um um they're th yeah they're i guess the intermediate is the, like the backyard garden mm -hmm. um yeah the backyard garden and and the other role that community gardens can play is for people who don't have a backyard yeah 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 so yeah, yeah, the community gardens, backyard gardening would be the uh, intermediate, and um, so I guess like the uh, the the theme of like the community garden wouldn't be to like, you know, you could either promote uh, like the basics or advanced. Um, yeah, to me that's the intermediate. Is you know, um, you know, are you here just for food as medicine? Do you want to benefit your health and wellness, um, or are you trying to step away from? you know, your nine to five and, and look at a, a alternative lifestyle. Um, yeah. So, yeah. There's just so many things that could be done. And so what I've been focusing on is recruiting more people to help organize and teach workshops. Um, Cause a lot of people, you know, they come and they see what I'm doing. They're like, Oh, that's so cool. I wish I could do that. I'm like, well, you can, you know, come, teach a workshop on making sun tea, come teach a workshop on, uh, you know, how to cook with vegetables, you know, or, um, how to raise backyard chickens or, or whatever. Uh, there's so many things that we could do. I can't do all of them. So that's what my re regenerative leadership program is about. Just giving people what they need to know in order to do what I'm doing because we need more of us as well, more, more educators, more leaders. And you don't have to know everything about gardening. I don't know everything about gardening. You don't know everything about gardening. You know, we're both learning as well. But it's just, you know, teaching people anything is, is a long process. It takes a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. And um, it, to to me, it just seems like it's the organizations, like like targeting the organizations that uh, it's so hard to pull them in individually. Yeah. Uh, and they need to yeah. come in on a bus, and that's where you know. Yeah. Well, and that's what I'm telling my regenerative leaders. Like, okay, you want to have a workshop on K and F? You know, we were going to make some LAB, and I said, well, let's find a church to invite. You know, find a youth group, find a Girl Scout troop, something like that. You know. Um, but I'm having some trouble getting my, my volunteers to call and invite and, you know, get that, get that going. Um, so I don't know. There's a lot that goes into this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it seems like we have a lot of the, um, the facilities and everything else is in place. We just need to get them, get them there. So it seems like, yeah, that's going to be a big focus uh once again we've already talked about you know how do we make this attractive um what kind of presentation is it going to take um um so you know just studying demographics you know i had learned that uh, generation w prefers email um mm. generation 
why why one does email why two does instagram or no i mean facebook why mm -hmm. two does email and facebook mm -hmm. and then generation z does instagram and tiktok mm -hmm. uh, yeah um, and so uh, for us like we're trying to make different types of content available for the email users instagram users and the tiktok users but the tiktok users um i'm finding that they're more concerned with like i said food as medicine and health as health and wellness mm -hmm. they're not so much inter interested in gardening but they just want to know like what the healthy vegetables are and plants and stuff um so generation y knows about putting them in the ground and then generation w um you know they're um just like seasoned uh old school kind of <laughs> they're, they're a good crowd but you can't talk to them like kids um <laughs> yeah 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 I've, I've been getting a lot of help from the um you know gen z and and uh or gen a gen x gen x and boomers on like um using their trucks <laughs> to pick things up and, and, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll really do some, some hard labor, but you know, they're busy. So it's just, I can get them there for a couple hours and do something really busted out, you know, fix the gate or whatever. Um, they're, they're, they're good for help with that. Um, but you know, I really want to get the young people out there helping me organize, like actually, um, being a part of the process because, Okay. Okay. So I went to, um, restore OKC up in North OKC, you know, and they have a big community garden and they have a high school internship program where I think they've got about 10 high school students and they pay them. Um, like I'm paying my interns, uh, and they have them work for, you know, a semester or a summer at a time. And they pretty much just do the garden labor. They just go out there and weed and harvest and plant you know, um, but I went there and I followed them around for a day and I observed and, you know, I found that they seem kind of bored and they seem kind of like, nah, they're not so into it. Like they're willing to do it, but they're not excited about it. And so I asked a couple of them, well, what if you got to design your own projects? You know, and they're like, yeah, that'd be awesome. You know, so you know, I, th I think they want that kind of that leadership. I think that younger generation wants that leadership. The older generation doesn't seem to want it as much because they've been there, done that, you know, but, but the younger ones, the high school, college age kids, they, they want to organize. They want to, I don't know if it's so much about leading. They've got a lot of social anxiety. So I'm trying to get them to, to, you know, if you're going to do something, invite some people to help you, you know, don't just do it by yourself, but I don't know, maybe I'm pushing them too hard. Maybe I should just let them do it themselves um, and not push so hard to, to get more people there. It's just so great when I can get the high school kids leading like elementary school kids. It's that's the best. It's amazing. It's so great. You know, you're like hitting all the levels at once. So ideally that's what I want to see happen. Um, it's just, it's just pulling teeth, trying to get anything to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, oh, you, you got to come over to FAM um, uh, for the summer camp that we hosted over there at the First American Museum. That, yeah. that was a blessing. Those kids were really smart. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really smart. Yeah. I did a business planning process with them and um, yeah, they, I mean, they came up with kind of silly, fun ideas, which was fun. Um, but you know, they, they were really thinking through it, you know, and some of them were like, oh yeah, I already have my own business, you know, and, <laughs> but yeah, they got it. They, they definitely understood all the parts of, of a business plan and, and they wrote some up. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. I felt like that was kind of a unique group of kids because we don't get that everywhere, you know, mm -hmm. um, we don't get that kind of reaction from kids. When anything we talked about, mycelium, business plans, um, community organizers, they were all like, you know, keeping right up with this. Yeah. Um, I thought that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it might just be a matter of finding the right people and the right kids, you know, which is fine. Yeah. There's just, there's so many roles for people to fill and, I think it's, it's finding the right fit, you know, 
but, but it's also hard when you're the organizer and you're just like, you can do anything. And that's like too broad. They just like, they can't fathom like, like all of those possibilities at once. So like you can be the educator, you can be the gardener, you can be a landscaper, you can just grow your own food, you can process food, you can, you know, you can be involved in this in so many different ways. Um, but a lot of people just don't even know what they want. So I don't know, maybe it's a matter of like giving them like a taster, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, um, and just seeing what sticks. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm definitely for um, giving them tasters. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm always, you know, I'm always about uh, uh, luring people in with food. Mm -hmm. And and usually it's like traditional foods. You know, me, I like talking to Mexicans because it's all corn, beans, and squash, you know, same stuff for us. Um, uh, but for like non-native folks, I'm always curious, like, what are your traditional foods? Like, there has to be some amazing things um, that your ancestors made. Um, let's bring it back, you know. Um, and so, ketchup. like you're saying, real ketchup. Real ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> I want to teach people how to make real ketchup. Dang Ke it, ketchup funny. is like kimchi. You can catch up anything. I didn't know that <laughs> until recently. Dang it. You that know, tomato so, so stuff is not ketchup. <laughs> uh, we got to have like a, a, a gala, I almost, an event, and you know, give out the tasters. Like, this is all garden food. This is what you guys are after. Um, this is health and wellness. This is what you want. Mm -hmm. um, it's in the garden. You, know, you have to get in there and work for it. But, um, yeah. To me, that's like, to me, I feel like I have the most success when talking about food and flavor um, mm -hmm. and health and wellness. Um, and it's always like with the intention of trying to get them into the garden um that's yeah. that's always my approach yeah um, yeah I just think that there's these two ends there there's the the process the whole process of food so there's the soil building first and then there's the the planting and the growing a lot of weeding in there because we have these invasives like bindweed and bermuda grass here that are absolute nightmares so there's a lot of that and then on the other end you've got the harvesting and the cooking right it seems like people are most interested at these ends right they want to stay as far away from that that weeding piece as possible right the farther you can get away from that the better and so they're really interested in the KNF stuff and they're really interested in the cooking, but anything in the middle is like, oh, I don't know about that. Um, so I've been trying to focus on those ends and then figure out how to deal with the weeding. And, you know, I really think these deep mulch beds are the answer. The only answer I've come up with that I like and I'm just really not interested in doing it any other way at this point. <laughs> yeah, this time of year, weeding is no joke. Um, it, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. It's too but hot the the deep mulch beds that I built are weed free. Heck yeah, they're fine. Or there's just a tiny little bit, and it's just like you just pluck it, and you get the whole root, just like that. Whole root comes out because the mulch is literally that deep. That's, that's what I want. That's what yeah. I want in my gardens. And that's what I want to teach people and show people as possible. And even my little garden out in front of my house. Um, so I live in an apartment and I just kind of took over right in front of the window and put, put a metal thing around it. Um, and I, it's sand, just sand. And I just took my compost and I just dumped it out there and I planted a tomato plant the first year and I put tons and tons of mulch, you know, all the leaves I could find from the neighborhood. I stacked up and got this thick on top of it. And that tomato plant grew huge, gigantic, a million cherry tomatoes. The next year I expanded it out just a little bit farther, did the same thing, added compost. I've got a, I've got a black soldier fly bin that I do all my compost in. So I just dumped all that out at the end of the season, um, mixed it in. And then I put, uh, again, this much mulch. Uh, last year, you know, last summer when we had that over a hundred degree temperature for two months straight and it didn't rain at all, you know how many times I had to water that garden to keep my tomato plants alive five times in two months with over a hundred degrees the entire time, because I've got that much mulch and that compost and I have, I weed it once a year and all just around the edges. 
that doesn't come in. If you have enough mulch and you have enough nitrogen, then you're golden. You don't have to fight so much. But when you till up an entire acre and don't have enough compost and mulch to cover it, you're you're going to have problems. You're basically a grass farmer. You know, you don't think you're a grass farmer. You think you're the opposite. But no, you're actually providing the perfect environment for grass because you don't have what you need for vegetables. Yeah. So that's my piece. <laughs> But you got to have a proof of concept. I've been just trying to get to that proof of concept where I've got enough of these deep mulch beds. Like I have, I have got a large area now under the fruit trees and I can point at that and say, look, look at that. I haven't watered that at all. And it's doing great. You know, look at those plants, you know, and look at that. I barely have to weed that, you know? So I think we have to convince people that there's a way to do it that isn't, having to spend three hours a day weeding. I'm wearing less labor intensive methods. Yeah. And I know there is the plastic method that most farmers, most vegetable farmers use where they just use that landscaping, the thick black landscaping woven stuff that we were laying down, you know, you poke holes in it, you put your plants in there. There is that method. But is that, how good is that for the soil? Black plastic in 100 degree weather? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that uh, is that good for the soil? No, that's just solarizing the soil. All you're, yeah. all you're doing is cooking, cooking everything out. Yeah, and is that, is that even good for your plants? Like, I just don't see how that works. Oh, yeah, when people do that. Uh, no, I am anti um, what you're talking about, that black landscaping. To me, yeah. it, just doesn't, it doesn't make sense at all. Um, um, the but that's the only way to do it where you don't have to pull weeds constantly yeah yeah uh, i opted for the panda film this year and i found that the panda film was cheaper than the black landscape fa mm. fabric I don't, I don't understand why people don't use the white one because it you know, oh, reflects uh -huh. the heat off the ground um and keeps the ground cooler you know mm -hmm. it's not like the, the 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 woven fabric which just cooks the ground mm -hmm. um yeah i'm, I'm anti um a uh, bare ground cover and the only thing you can do that would annoy me more is using black landscape cover and cutting holes for your little plants. I think that's that's horrible. Um, right, right. But that's really the only way to do it where it's just not a nightmare with the bindweed yeah. and, and yeah. Bermuda grass, except for deep mulch and nobody even knows that exists. If you can get enough deep mulch though. Yeah, I it's getting the mulch. That's to why it took me so long and why I lost my funding, because it took me so long to get the materials. I had to figure out where and how to get them. And it took a while. Um, but now that I have them, I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to crowdfund, you know. And it's probably good, because now I can do it the way I want to do it and don't have people breathing down my neck. But I don't know. Um, okay. We're coming to the end of our time. And okay. I feel like we've thrown out some good ideas here, definitely with using groups to get people out. Um, I, I, I like that you and I have been working together, you know, having each other come out as guest speakers for events. Um, if we can find some groups who want to keep going with the gardening, maybe we could trade them off and, and have them rotate, like you were saying, around to different gardens. I like that idea, like getting just start on onboarding one church or one girl scout group after another it's not just a one one time thing it's not just coming out let's do this every month let's do this every month at a different community garden right you could maybe get some of these groups to get more involved um and i'm also down with supporting uh gardens at their own you know place if they like a church if they want to have a garden in their own church and uh, the crowdfunding site that I'm trying to set up would let let them, um, you know, use that to advertise their garden and get more people involved in it and funding it. Yeah, um, I definitely feel like there could be education gardens and production gardens. Um, 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Real- I think I think there's kind of three kinds of community gardens. There's the ones that are really focused most on education. There's the kinds that are focused most on on production, uh, and maybe they let co- people come in and pick stuff, but they don't really let people in- get involved in in growing. And then there's the plots where they just give people different plots, you know, and you grow your own food in your own plot. Right. So I, I'm most interested in the first and the third one because I'm not really a farmer. <laughs> I'm a mushroom farmer. I'm not I'm not down. I, I'm really not good at mass production of vegetables. Um, so I, I'm most interested in educating and and in trying to set people up with their own garden plots to grow for themselves or to grow to sell. And I've got three acres out there at the Santa Fe South Garden. I can I can really set some people up uh, to do it, you know. So, yeah, making these resources accessible and bringing people in. That's what I think we have to do. So, (laughs) and I think we need more people involved in it. So um, thank you. Thank you for being on this podcast and for people, you know, who are listening. I hope that they'll contact us um, and get involved. Yeah, I'm thinking um, it's kind of late to be starting programs this year, but I think that there's hope for next next year, next spring, mm-hmm. um, to do a lot of planning and strategizing. Um, and hopefully, uh, like I said, I'm trying to uh, make um, these, these uh, operating procedures for, for my gardens. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope that'll help um, with the strategy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah all right well let's stay in touch and thank you so much all right jackie thank you okay i'll see you later travis bye thank you for listening till the end i have other guests lined up who i'm really excited to talk to about these subjects and i'm looking for more people to talk to and more subjects to talk about so please uh let me know in the comments or on my patreon you can also contact me directly if you go to my business consultancy website regenerativedynamics.com there's a contact form there that's probably the most direct way to get in touch with me and i look forward to continuing this journey